solving equations using factoring. So we're starting to factor polynomials, and we're going to get into more factoring techniques as we go along. Uh, but what, why would we want to be factoring? And we're using the factoring to solve equations. That's really kind of where most of what we do when we're working in algebra is we're looking at solving equations. There's different equations. How do we solve them? We're going to use factorings to start solving equations, unlike ones that we've seen. So the property that we're going to be using is called the zero product property. For any real numbers a and b, if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero, or both a and b equals zero. Now this makes sense. If I say to you that um, five times a number is zero, well, you know that other number has to be zero. So if I tell you that um, a number times zero is zero, well, the other number could, it could be zero or it could be something else. But in order to get zero as a product, at least one of the numbers has to be zero. So that's our zero product property. And we're going to use that along with factoring to help us solve equations that have more than one solution. All right, so let's look at some um, very simple equations to start with here and see how this works. So let's say I've got 3m and then in parentheses times m minus 4. So notice what I have here is two factors. I'm doing 3m times m minus 4. So I've got two, I've got a monomial and a binomial that I'm multiplying together to get a product of 0. So since I'm multiplying these two together to get a product of 0, I know that at least one of them, or maybe both of them, has to be equal to 0. So I can break them apart and set each factor equal to 0. So one of my factors is 3m. 3m could be 0. My other factor is, 4, is m minus 4. m minus 4 could be equal to 0. I don't know which one or both. But notice what we've done here is I've break, broken this up into equations that we know how to solve. And that's a lot of what we do in algebra is we take this weird, funky thing that we haven't seen before and we use our, our algebra properties to break it down into something that we do know how to solve. And we do know how to solve these two equations. So I divide by 3 on both sides here and I get m equals 0, one possible solution. I break uh, this down by, I solve this by adding 4 and I get m equals 4. So I have two possible solutions here. 0 and 4. And if I go back to my original, I should be always able to make those work. I do want to check your solutions. Um, if you remember from our absolute value equations and inequalities, sometimes we get an answer that doesn't actually really work and we need to eliminate it. We want to check that here also. So I'm going to plug in 0. Um, if 3 times 0, yeah, that would be 0. So notice what would happen here. 3 times 0, this would give me 0 times a negative 4. 0 times negative 4 is still 0. So it doesn't matter that this part doesn't equal 0. As long as one of them is equal to 0, the whole product is equal to 0. And a 4, well, this would give me 12 times 0. And 12 times 0 is 0. So two possible solutions. Either one of those, if m is either one of those, um, that will work. All right, next one. A little more complicated because I have two binomials here. But notice that I've got a binomial times a binomial. So I have two factors. And each of those factors, when I multiply them together, I end up with a product of 0, which means that either one of these factors could be 0. So I'm going to break this up into 4m plus 8 equals 0 and m minus 3 equals 0. So I'm going to solve each of those, and I end up with m equals negative 2, and I also end up with m equals 3. So I have two solutions here, negative 2 and 3. And again, if I go back in and throw them in there, if I do a negative 2, 4 times negative 2, is negative 8, negative 8 plus 8, there's my 0, that's 1, 0. So that would be 0 times negative 5, which is 0. If I plug a 3 in here, this one would be 3, this one would be what, 20? So 20 times 0, that gives me 0. So two possible solutions, negative 2 and 3. All right, let's look at some slightly more complicated equations. So these ones are not factored. The first two we already factored them. We could see right in the original equations what the factors were. These are not factored. So notice what I've got here. I've got an equation. It's equal to 0 on one side, but the other side is not factored. This is taking, this is taking a monomial and subtracting another monomial. So I have a binomial there. This is not multiplying anything together. I could have any number minus a number and get 0. Like There's a lot of things that I could put in there and make that work. Um, however, I want to narrow this down to the two that work in the specific one here. 
So I'm going to, instead of just doing guess and check, and guess and check will work. There's nothing wrong with guess and check, but especially when we get to fractions um, and rational numbers, it's going to get more complicated to use guess and check. And as we get to more solutions, guess and check gets a little bit trickier. You can usually get one of the numbers. It's going to be a little bit harder to get the other one. Um, so again, this is a, this is a systematic step-by-step that will get you to those correct answers every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor what's on the left side here. Notice I've got zero on the right. I'm going to factor what I've got on the other side here. So I come up with two factors that are multiplied together. So this is a binomial, so I'm going to look for common factors. I can take a 4m out of each, so I end up with a 4m. 4m squared divided by 4m is m, and negative 4m divided by 4m is negative 1. So I've got two factors. Aha, now this is looking like, like our number 1. 4m equals 0, that gives me m equals 0. m minus 1 equals 0, that gives me m equals 1. So I end up with two solutions here, 0 and also 1. If I go back and plug this in here, 4 times 0 squared is 4 times 0, minus... 4 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, that works. And I can put a 1 in there. If I say 4 times 1 squared, that's 4, minus 4 times 1, that's 4, 4 minus 4 equals 0. So those are my two solutions. All right, and the last one we're going to take a look at here, I've got 12x equals 3x squared. So notice what we've done here. We have set each factor equal to 0. We have made sure we've factored the polynomial. The last thing we want to pay attention to is that we've got zero on one side of our equation. So we want to set this equation equal to zero before we do anything. Because remember, it's a zero product property. So it's multiplying two things together to get a product of zero. So one side of the equation needs to be equal to zero. So I'm going to get rid of something here. In this case, I just chose to get rid of the 3x squared. Move to the left. Now it's equal to zero. Now I can factor this polynomial. And I ended up by taking out a 3x. Uh, so I have 3x times 4 minus x. Now I'm going to split it up and set each factor equal to zero. So I come up with x equals 0 and 4 equals x. So I've got two solutions. If I go back and plug this in, 12 times 0 is 0 equals 3 times 0 squared. That's 0 also. If I plug a 4 in here, um, 12 times 4 is 48. 3 times 16, that's 48 also. So that gives me my two solutions. And what you will notice in here is notice that we come up with two solutions for both of these. When we started talking about polynomials, we talked about the degree of the polynomial. This is where that degree comes into play. If you pay attention to the degree of the polynomial, it's going to tell you how many possible solutions there are. So notice for each of these, we have a degree of 2, and there's two solutions. Now, there may have only been one solution, or we may find that there's no number that's going to make this work. But the most solutions we'll come up, be able to come up with is the degree of the polynomial. So we want to be looking out for two possible solutions. We may only end up with one or zero, but two is the most we want to pay attention to. If you only get up with one and there's no other even anywhere to pay attention to, take a look at how you're solving this. So our steps for this. Set the equation equal to zero. We're going to make sure we factor the polynomial. And then after we factor it, we're going to set each side equal to zero. 